Hello, everyone. My name is Martin Kwas. I'm an economist interested in the use of natural resources and sustainability. And I'm happy to have here with me Mark Hennington. He's a geologist with a particular interest in marine mineral resources. Since uh, many decades now, at least since the early 1970s, when the Club of Rome published the Limits to Growth book, there is a big concern that humanity and the global economy might run off out of natural resources. And uh, the Club of Rome predicted now 40 years ago that uh, by now, more or less, the time when, when we are living, there would be no more um, left of a, a set of specific mineral and um, metal resources. If one looks at the data that we have now, and uh, the graph on the screen shows a time series of a price index published by the World Bank this year um, of metals. The data is not quite as conclusive as the prediction by the Club of Rome. What we see is um, ups and down in the, in the price. An up would indicate that resources become more scarce. A down would in indicate that they become more abundant as supply on the market. You can see in the 2008, 2009 period, the sharp dip in the prices, which is due to the global economic crisis. And then one again, Mark and I briefly discussed on this, perhaps because of the slowdown in the growth in China. But overall, if you look at the entire picture, there seems to be an upward trend. And presumably, there's no doubt that in the long run, resources will become scarcer and scarcer. So the question is, will eventually our metal resources not come anymore from land surface, from land mines, but from the seabed? Well, most geologists would argue that there is an abundant supply of uh, raw materials on land, and the challenges for recovering those resources are increasing, which is why the metal prices are going up. But uh, the possibility that resources may be uh, significantly recovered from the oceans is still an open question. And uh, I think that most of the uh, large corporations that are, are uh, charged with supplying uh, populations with raw materials would argue that uh, it's not necessarily a requirement at this time, which means that there are other drivers for marine mineral exploration. Is there anything going on in seabed mining already? Uh, absolutely. There is an abundance of seabed mining uh, in shallow water. Uh, there is no seabed mining at the present time in the deep sea. This is a fundamental uh, difference between uh, land-based mining and shallow marine mining and deep sea mining is that we have no examples of what deep sea mining will be like. At the present time, there is an abundance of uh, shallow marine mining for minerals like diamonds, uh, gold, uh, tin in some places in Southeast Asia. There is the possibility for uh, shallow marine mining of minerals like uh, phosphates, phosphorites, which are used for uh, fertilizer. But the vast majority, the overwhelming vast majority of marine mining is now for sand, uh, for construction materials. And in fact, uh, it eclipses all other forms of industrial activity in the oceans except fishing and oil and gas. Mm. And there is a, a intense um, competition for sand resources in, uh, on the continental shelf. Um, for building the next skyscraper in Dubai or the next mm. skyscraper in Shanghai. Okay, so quite surprisingly, it's not, not the minerals. The we have been talking about, or the metals, it's, it's sand, right? It's sand. And this is an important driver for the new or the emerging industry for marine mining is that it's driven in large part by companies and by corporations that have as their principal objective shallow marine mining. Mm. And so there is a large gap in understanding between the, uh, what's currently going on in the marine environment and what will have to go on if we want to mine in the deep sea because you've got 4,000 meters of difference right. in the water depth, yeah. a technological challenge. 
So, so is there anything going on facing this technological challenge? Is there anything of deep sea mining going on currently? So, yeah, so there are two principal activities going on in deep sea mining. One is exploration. This is the, mm -hmm. by far the most important. Um, so, this, so exploration means Means that looking for and defining the potential resources, mm -hmm. not extracting them, uh, mm -hmm. not exploiting them. Uh, that will come presumably at some later time. So exploration is a big activity, and the second, of course, is developing the technology, or at least the technology that people think we're going to need for deep sea mining. That has actually been going on for decades because the first boom in deep sea mining exploration was for manganese nodules in the early mm -hmm. 1980s, and big corporations, uh, some big corporations have already built the machines mm -hmm. to extract manganese nodules. But there is no mining going on right now. It's all about uh, exploration and defining the resource. Is there metal there, enough metal there to contribute significantly to uh, raw material supply? Mm -hmm. and, and, and who is doing that? Is it private companies or countries? or All of the above. It's a mix right now of uh, some small private corporations, or they're not private, they're listed on the stock exchange. Uh, there's a mix of countries. Uh, the major effort at the present time is uh, by um, countries and, and corporations belonging to consortia that are referred to as contractors mm -hmm. to the International Seabed Authority. The so the International Seabed Authority is that international body who has the duty and the right to license exploration and potentially future mining. Correct, in international waters. So as a consequence of the law of the sea, the International Seabed Authority was set up to uh, regulate and administer any exploration of resources, all resources, not just uh, mineral resources, uh, in the deep sea. And they have set up a, um, a framework for exploration and they presently have signed up uh, 26 contractors, mm -hmm. which consist of countries, uh, some commercial uh, companies, some consortia of companies, all backed by states. And their licenses for exploration last for about 15 years. There are, at present, the big uh, con uh, contractors are, for example, mm -hmm. uh, China, Russia, Japan, Korea, France, Germany. Um, and uh, several others that have had contracts now for more than 13 years. So exploration has been going on for some time. Um, and the next step, which is the big question mark, yeah. is uh, whether they will proceed from exploration to exploitation. And they're working both in the deep sea and in some exclusive economic zones as well. Uh, in fact, the first uh, deep sea mining license has already been granted uh, to a company operating in Papua New Guinea. Mm. But this is outside the realm of the International Seabed Authority because it's in the exclusive economic mm. zone of, of a single mm. country. Mm. So, so we don't know yet sure when and if there will be a lot of deep seabed mining going on, but could we think about what could be the motivations for deep mm. seabed mining? Mm. Uh, that's a very difficult question, and it's extremely complex. I mean, the current uh, uh, wisdom in the general public is that we need deep sea mining because we're running out of metals, which is definitely not the case. And uh, so a number of other motivations are there. One is very simple. It's economic. There are commercial companies that mm -hmm. believe that they can make money uh, by deep sea mining because the deposits are, in some cases, very high grade. They believe that there are certain... Mm -hmm. Uh, technological advantages to mining in the deep sea. You don't have to build a mine, you don't have to dig a hole. Sure. I think that's a very small driver at the present time. So I the low-hanging fruit, so to speak. Precisely. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I think a much greater driver is the political and mm. the uh, strategic advantage that may be, uh, that is perceived to be an opportunity for certain countries like China, for example, or Russia, or uh, or even for countries that uh, don't have any supply of metals of their own and would yeah. like to have a secure source of metals. Uh, so it's a very complex picture, it's a fabric It's a, of, of motivations and there's no single driver for, uh, for deep sea mining. Right. Mm. So, so if I uh, conclude, there is already a lot of mining going on in the seabed, but it's not what, what we think, might think, it's rather sand. Sand mining is, is a big thing currently. There's not much significant mining on the deep seabed, Yet, 
there's a lot of exploration already going on. Maybe we can expect deep seabed mining in the future, but that will not be for the reason that humanity is running out of metals on land. It will be for a complex mixture of different motivations, including political and strategic motivations. Yeah, thank you, Mark, for My this point. insightful yeah. interview. Thank you.